Alright, song folder two or part three, the very end. Uh, finishing up the left side of the folder, the very bottom of the barrel. Uh, the very end of part two, I was uh, distracted by the battery uh, being very low and kind of forgot to... It wasn't really a, much of a story with happiness and submission to God, but um, while I was writing it, my friends uh, wanted to go out and, and get a drink and I was in the middle of writing it and uh, just couldn't walk away from it, so I didn't drink back then anyway. But, uh, so I stayed home and wrote the song and while they were gone, and it was in Boston, and I was under the impression at the time I had never been to Boston before, and uh, had been on, going there on and off for about a month or so at the time, or a couple months at the most. And I had the impression there was this really, really beautiful, peaceful, green city that was just idyllic and nothing bad ever happened in it and uh, and then well, while I was writing the song my friends came home and they had been in a fight and somebody had, all these tough guys had jumped them and I don't know if the bike got stolen but it got destroyed and and uh, so I missed out on that uh, <laughs> by staying home and writing the song which I wanted to do anyway I didn't want to drink anyway it's not I wasn't drinking at the time anyway uh, we picked up at Dust on a Rainbow. So anyway, that wasn't really my story, but uh, but that that is the story behind. Uh, it was my buddy Bill's story and his brother. So if you want to know the story about the fight, ask them. Dust on a Rainbow. Uh, yeah, it's the last song on Holy uh, Holy Smokes. Uh, written over the course of about a year, between 08 and 09. Very faded. Uh, yellowed notebook paper, scratched out. That's a good song, actually, yeah. Dope song. <laughs> Nothing special, dated 98 to 203. Probably because I think I had the intro for years, and then I finished it, the, the music, the meat of the song in 03, probably. Never could come up with a title. Dope song. Self-explanatory. She Hates You, from 2004, off the Garage Door record. Uh, just one of those rock, it's a rock song. Uh, nothing special, neither here nor there. Some tablature of the breakdown in the middle, so I wouldn't forget. Chapel of Cheap Melodies. This song goes back quite a ways, actually. Yeah, from 1999 to 2001. I remember uh, thinking that the verse or the chorus was actually this is actually a pretty interesting song. I think it's on the Stupid Old Heart album, and the chorus is uh, a five a five bar phrase, which makes it a little unusual. Um, one of those depressed, nihilistic, self-hating type type of songs. Whatever. Ah, yeah, head full of worms. I remember writing this. Uh, I remember when I was writing it, 1999. That was when I was in L.A. for the first time. And uh, this must be the chord changes, I imagine. Very yellowed piece of paper, uh, mold stains on it. And I was living at the Gilbert Hotel in L.A., which is the last time I was in L.A., at all, for any length of time, for more than one night, or even less, was in 2015, and the Gilbert had become a nice apartment complex. But at the time, it was a hellhole of a hotel, and uh, it was on Wilcox, just uh, between sun halfway between Sunset and, uh, and Hollywood, whatever that cross street is there, I forget. And I remember sitting in my room... It was the kind of hotel where, you know, I, you would go to work, uh, you'd step over people in the, in, the, in the hallway who were passed out in the hallway, drunk. Uh, it, uh, it was a rough place. And uh, anyway, head full of worms, I wrote this in that hotel room, um, in one of the hotel rooms, whatever, there at the Gilbert Hotel in 1999, off of the Garage Door album. Over the Five and Far Away, Nothing particularly interesting about the printout, but uh, 
Uh, this is off of this off the No Destination EP. Uh, I did put it on Volume Two of the Greatest Hits albums, and it's a seven-minute street poem with uh, a few lines from uh, from some street mentors I've known over the years, and uh, just some some. Uh, this song captures what I call the spirit of dope as well as I will ever be able to capture it. And of course, I'll never try again. I don't need to for every reason. Over the five and far away. Uh, from, I want to say, 03, I assume. 04, yeah. Written in 04. In L.A. Over the five, meaning, of course, the freeway. Meaning, I'll see you. We're gone. We're leaving. Over the five and far away. Badass off a garage door. Just a silly rock song. Uh... from 07 and written in Austin, back in the Red River days. Jesus, the days we have seen. Yeah, this is a very old song from September of 95. Uh, that doesn't come out. September of 95, though. And I think the lyric, the title is off, is out of Shakespeare, actually, because I was in college at the time. And uh, I, Falstaff or somebody would exclaim something, and I just thought that was a he exclaimed something in one of his plays, and uh, it's Shakespeare, of course, and uh, I just thought that was I just lifted the title from Shakespeare, and uh, yeah, I'm very grateful for having taken that Shakespeare course because uh, I'm not sure I would appreciate him without it. Zombie wasteoids have the power. Uh, Print out a silly song off the end of uh, it's the very last song in uh, on the stupid old, old heart album. Uh, yeah, printed out or typed out, uh, written on October twentieth, two thousand six, in Austin. Apparently, silly tune typed on the back of a copy that wasn't used for whatever reason. Tomato Jane. This is a funny song. This is a silly, ridiculous tune written, yeah, uh, uh, October of 01, uh, right after 9-11, actually, at the Gilbert Hotel, where I was just talking about, in Chateau Marmont, which was my job at the time. I was a security guard slash night shift, do-everything type of guy at the fancy, wonderful hotel. Really beautiful place. Billy Wilder said that once that he would rather stay in the boiler room of the Chateau Marmont than in any other hotel in Hollywood. It was a famous, it still is, it's just a classic, wonderful place. The cheapest room at the time was 400 bucks. Uh, the most expensive room was in the $1,500 range or more. But Tomato Jane, so I was on Sunset and I would walk, I would step over the guys sleeping in the hallway of my hotel to, in my work clothes, which were nice dress clothes, work at this nice hotel. That's where I met Bjork. I didn't meet her, but uh, uh, I answered that she delivered, I was the door guy for her. I, she uh, gave me some items for dry cleaning once from while well, she was in a bathrobe. I uh, met um, Jerry, St uh, yeah, Jerry Stiller there. He was working on uh, King of Queens at the time, and uh, I got to know him a little bit. Not really, but in a hotel staff kind of way. I We, uh, Got to talk a little bit in the elevator. I met. I made Christopher Lloyd laugh uh, in the in the light in the elevator. Uh, he uh, got on the elevator. You know, Doc Brown from from uh, uh, Back to the Future, right? He gets on with these giant dogs, and I said, "Man, I've had girlfriends that were smaller than your dogs," and it made him laugh. And it was really funny because it was that Doc Brown laugh, and that was kind of fun. Welcome. That was my first job in Hollywood, so. But I wrote this ridiculous tune, walk, just walking, I just had the, you know, it was a short walk from, from uh, the very beginning of West Hollywood, where the Chateau Marmont is, to my hotel on uh, Wilcox and Sunset, more or less. And um, so I'd walk to work, you know, every day, and uh, I wrote this song on a route, and was inspired by whatever it was that I was looking at, even though this lyrics were probably really, don't really, uh, uh, betray any Hollywood influence particularly. So Bad It Hurts off of uh, off of uh, Vampire Cats, a good song 
a funny song. This would be this would be a good live song. I'd still like to play this tune, actually. Uh, <laughs> you know, the last verse. I'm a poor man, just like Jesus, except I smoke a lot of weed. Really funny. I don't smoke weed anymore. It's funny how the Lord is so patient with you. I don't think it's a sin. It's a sin for me. I think the Lord used weed. Helped me use. He allowed me to use weed. Or I was so grateful. I could talk about that for a long time. I don't think it's a sin. He. I quit, but not because it's a bad thing. I quit because he wanted me to at this time. But I, I wouldn't. I haven't. I can't talk bad about pot. It has uh, always saved my life. It saved my life. George Bush, what's your problem? Uh, an old printout, stained uh, from 05, 06, um, written in um, Montrose, California, probably when I was living on my buddy's love seat, which was not comfortable, but more comfortable than the car. I, it was a Ford Taurus I was living at the time, so a lot more comfortable than that. Uh, yeah. The only overly, overtly political song I've ever written that has a very obvious political statement. And it's, uh, it's not, a, not an album song. This song is really got some interesting music in it. I, it got lost. This is one of those that got lost. Horsefly Waltz, uh, written in uh, February, March of 1999 in Chicago. And uh, this would have been when I lived on 18th and Racine, and uh, there was a big um, train wreck at the time. Uh, Amtrak, I think, derailed, maybe, and uh, there was just, it, it was a uh, tragic event, and I was inspired by, you know, the, like, just what, what it, it's morbid, but, you know, it was kind of like, well, you know, something to write about, so it was inspired by that. You can see that the lyric sheet has been sitting in the folder for 20 years. It's completely uh, stained and, and uh, old, and apparently I had the idea of a, of a title, Noah Discovers America, instead of washing up on Mount Sinai or wherever he mount washed up on, or whatever, Mount Horeb, I don't, I don't know, but uh, wherever it is that he washed up, the city would like to say wash up on, somewhere in Colorado, <laughs> but it never went anywhere. I got one word into it, and uh, at the end of that. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, uh, there's some good. This is a good song though. It's Horsefly Waltz. It's got a weird starts off in five, and there's three parts to it, so that's why it was kind of a waltz. And then Horsefly is twisted, right? So yeah, it's kind of a sad loss to have that gone, but uh, it's also obsolete, you know. I could take the music, though. I might lift the music and use it for something. I've done that a million times. Iron Fist by Motorhead. Great song. Never played it. Learned it. It's a riff-based, kind of. It's not an acoustic song. Uh, you can kind of turn the rhythm guitar of, uh, say, the Ramones uh, into an acoustic rhythm. But this is more of an electric song. But I did learn it. It's such a good song. That chorus is fantastic. Uh, but Iron Fist by Motorhead, on the back of Prison Bound by Social Distortion, which I also learned and never played. I Don't Care About You, a very old song from uh, 1998. This had its heyday in um, San Francisco in 02 with this open mic on the hate where everybody smoked pot openly in the bar, um, that was a fun, and, and, and you get like, you got one song, but everybody was on the same page, and just one tune felt like a 10 minute psychedelic jam, everybody was high, hash all over the place, weed everywhere, you know, there was like a weed room in the back, but people weren't super, you know, as long as you didn't like pull out a joint at the bar, people were, they, they didn't care. And it was a lot of fun. Back in 02 was when that, that was. I uh, met a couple of good friends of mine to this day, actually. This guy who plays uh, in the living, he makes a living in the subways in San Francisco and has for years, uh, the whole time. Restless Wanderer, written in North Hollywood in 06. Nothing there, it's just a printout. But that song from uh, American Infidel. 
Down you go. Undated, silly little riff. One minute tune off Fabulous Dream. Uh, um, yeah. Just kind of some silly lyrics to fill in the, make it not an instrumental song. Love is Cruel from 05. Uh, yeah. Went out to Baltimore, um, which is a mistake. But it was interesting too. I, I kind of had to do it. I lost my LA groove though, and LA was never the same for me after that. I was in an LA mode, and I left LA in 04 to go to Baltimore, and uh, which was a mistake, but also not, because I lost my LA groove, which at the time seemed like a big deal in hindsight. Um, not such a bad, not such a bad thing, because I don't glad I'm not there now. You know, what was I going to do in LA anymore? It was. I went back to L.A. and when I got back there, I realized I was done with it. But uh, but I met some good friends on my second or tenth or whatever it is long stay. I can't take another broken heart. Uh, just another song from end of '06, early '07 printout. Not a live tune by any means, so it's in the left side. My girlfriend hates my guts. Like this is the kind of thing I used to write. And this was, uh, this got the chords on it, this from 04, I want to say, yeah, summer of 04. Uh, it's a, it's, 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 it's that self-hating thing, it's the alcoholic clown records vibe. I wouldn't write this song these, day, these days even if you paid me. I wouldn't write something like this if you paid me. But, uh, I would take your money and then sell you on something else. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't write, my girlfriend hates my guts, and I'm a drunken loser, and all that kind of nonsense. I wouldn't write that now to save my life. Number one psalm. <laughs> uh, this turned into a, this, this title was lame. I always, the title's boring, it has nothing to do with the first psalm. It turned into Jesus, It's All Right, off of um, uh, the gospel album, uh, Everything I Have Is Yours. And uh, it's got some good lines in it. I've got a few gospel tunes. And uh, this is one of them. Uh, one of the good lines is what here? One of the stronger lines in the, uh, yeah, my selfishness abandoned me. That's a good line. My selfishness abandoned me. And indeed it does. Dreams never come true. This is, this is a non-entity of a tune. It's another one of those negative songs, you know. It, in fact, it didn't even make it on one of the negative albums. Uh, um, yeah, 07. Um, just simple, simple one four five song in C, and uh, it, it it was so negative it didn't even end up on anything anything new. Uh, it ended up on Breakfast at Cuneo's Drive-In. I should make those into videos. I don't want to. Uh, from uh, October of ninety eight, this is off the Wild Irish Rose album. Uh, a, a song that uh, wasn't worth writing. The music was is good. The sentiment uh, is wasted, as uh, as it generally always has been. But you can tell that the lyrics have been sitting around for 22 years from '98. You can't read that. But October '98. I make the rules. Written uh, in Austin, 06. Uh, yeah. Back in uh, the shack days, in the uh, east side, in uh, at the end of '06, and I, yeah, it, it, it's. Uh, I used to. I spent the first two months there, sitting in the dark, up all night, drinking coffee and writing songs, and I'd walk out for supplies. And I met this homeless. Well, I don't know if he was homeless. He's kind of homeless, and definitely street urchin vibe, homeless black guy, and and. Uh, he wanted to shake. I shook his hand, and he was like, really, he was threatening to attack me, and. You know, it's like I, I know I'm white, but and I'm not a I'm not a hardcore killer, but uh, but I've been down, man. You're not really gonna. I, I can. I'm not worried about it. But yeah, that the, because there's a song, there's a line in here where he talks about him. He's gonna slice me, and it's true. That's what he. You know, whatever. We've all been there, right? Yeah, you know, some crazy lunatic comes up to you and wants to cut your heart out. Yeah, another one. I'll never love you. Off of. Uh, 
off of, uh, this is about Junkie Chick, written in 04. Uh, this is true. The song is true. This is all true. The song actually happened. All of it did. Uh, she pulled a knife on me and and I pulled and I and I and attacked me. I had to wrestle it out of her hands. Uh, <laughs> and then she, I got it out of her hands, and uh, she went in the kitchen and got another knife, and we sat across the room from each other and smoked a pack of uh, Marlboro Lights a piece, I think, at right now. Just chain smoked a pack of cigarettes each. Maybe we shared it. I want to say we smoked our own pack. Whatever the case, by the time the cigarettes were gone, it would have chilled out, and we went on about our day. Uh, that was the end of that. That relationship was doomed from the beginning, of course. Cold Dead Night, yeah, written about uh, Chicago, written in, um, you can't even read it, October, November uh, 90, 99, it doesn't even, you can't even tell, 1990-something, I don't want to say 99, right, 98 or 9, one of the two, for sure. And uh, actually that was written, I, I, I didn't finish that story, um, but the, it, the beginning is about Chicago, and um, uh, um, and then whatever, it was kind of inspired by this uh, situation I was in in Chicago at the time. And then the second, the ending, is about uh, L.A., and when I OD'd and I was uh, trying to break into somebody's house, but I wasn't trying to break into somebody's house, I just thought I was home, and... Uh, um, paper slippers and drops of blood. They, I woke up at Cedar Sinai, and the first thing they asked me was, "What planet are we on?" And I have no doubt, especially knowing what I know now about Cedar Sinai, if I had, if I had answered anything but Earth, I would have been committed and MK ultra out of existence, most likely. And uh, but uh, yeah, that was a rough night, and that's true. That's all. This song is true. It's off of uh, Fabulous Dream, and uh, all that happened. And, uh, yeah, I ended up homeless there, and I just decided to count my losses and go back back to Chicago. Ghost Song, off of, uh, off of, uh, Fabulous Dream, self-explanatory, kind of, creepy, sad, scary tune, beautiful song. No Reason to Stay, uh, off of Bro Broken Bird. Just a printout. It's a good song. It's an interesting little recording. It's, it's the mics are so hot you can hear the birds four blocks away, but the per performances are right, and so it's I kind of like when that happens, when uh, when it's it's just right. Love will save me. This song got kind of lost. This used to be. This is printed out. Uh, oh, it's got Proverbs 11:17 written out here. I wonder what the merciful man does good for his own soul, but he who is cruel troubles his own flesh. Hmm. For some reason, I felt like writing that on the back of the lyrics. But love will save me, uh, written in 2000, and uh, that's off of. I think that finally made it onto uh, uh, Slow Burning Fun about nine years later, Volume Two of Slow Burning Fun, and. Uh, yeah, there's some good songs, or some good lines in that song. If you want to hear them, you can listen to it. What is this? Oh, the beginning of, uh, these are the, the uh, lyric uh, prompts for Dirty Magazine. Probably for when we were recording, or maybe for live, when I used to play it, so I didn't have to remember that. I could just kind of glance at the first line, and then once you got the first line, you can remember it. Uh, some other lyrics that never got anywhere. I don't, oh, this is from some lines from Off to the Races, scrabbled, scribbled down off of some photocopy of some pictures from God knows what. Too Much Too Soon, off of, uh, off of uh, uh, Blinded by Faggots, actually, it's off of uh, one of the greatest hits albums, I want to say the last one, uh, uh, written right before I got married the second time, and uh, it was one of those prescient songs that you, uh, so, you know, yeah, beware. <laughs> Pork Chops for President, this never went anywhere. Dumb title. Uh, we're from 06. Um, just some lyrics typed out on the back of a resume that is never used. Uh, 
apparently, since I used it as a lyric sheet. Yeah. Uh, back in the... That's a political song. Like I say, George Bush, What's Your Problem is a political song. This one I'm not going to bother with. I don't think you all can handle that one. Uh, knowing what... Uh, how fearful you are of language these days. Handsome Family Cover. I was a big Handsome Family fan for many, many years, and uh, they were a big influence on me in the 90s and early 2000s, and My Ghost is a great song. And uh, But I saw them at South by Southwest in 2009, and I hadn't seen them in years, and they knew who I was. We, we were never friends, but, you know, back in the MySpace years, and even before, uh, you know, they, they were aware of me because of... Uh, I was a super fan. They are great. She's the great lyricist, and he's a great songwriter, and they're just the perfect team. Married couple. They've moved to Albuquerque. I met him in Chicago. I saw him randomly. I just wanted to see their... I saw their name in the paper all the time, and they sounded interesting, so I went to see them and was not disappointed. And I went and, and I showed them... Uh, I gave them a copy of Slow Burning Fun, which was a double album. Uh, it was just a CDR, but uh, the guy was kind of aloof, and uh, then he and then he made a MySpace post several months or maybe a year or something later where he's so it's like, oh, this my friends just put out a double album. Nobody does that anymore. And I'm like, you guys know who I am. I gave you my double album, and you didn't listen to me, and I haven't listened to them since. I kind of forgot who they were. Actually, I have not listened to them since. I have no idea. This is an old song from. There's some good lyrics on here. Dumb title, uh, not mine, and I'm not going to embarrass the person whose title it would be. Um, yeah, I don't know what this is. This is somebody else's poem. <laughs> Never used it for that reason. And <laughs> New Slang by the Shins, which is actually a really, really interesting song. That's a really great song. Some of the lyrics kind of annoy me, um, but they're good. They're, it's just a great song, and I, it's, it was worth learning because it's an interesting, sim, over, it's surprisingly easy, it's complicated and easy at the same time. That's a really masterful song, actually. And last but not least, I Don't Want to Grow Up by Tom Waits, written on the back of a piece of Christmas wrapping paper. Uh... <laughs> and completely just shredded and gone by virtue of being last in line for God knows how long. I'm sure I, I, I know I print this out in, or uh, hand printed, wrote it out in Austin in the, in the shack. So this would have been from end of 06, early 07. But I Don't Want to Grow Up by Tom Waits. Um, hand uh, written on the back of a piece of Christmas wrapping paper. So there, here endeth the song folder tour. Uh, thank you for watching and have a good day.